Hi, LinkedIners. Today we'll talk about the concept of procrastination. Is procrastination laziness? Uh, as a definition, procrastination is actually uh, the habit to delay a task that is important in favor to a task that is less important and more enjoyable. On the other hand, the laziness is actually the unwillingness to act on a, a task, whatever that might be. Uh, to this uh, effect, I actually invited uh, Mike Cameron uh, because he wrote the book The Emergent Leader and he has actually a chapter dedicated to this subject. Uh, as a result, I asked him a, a few questions around what is procrastination, uh, how you identify procrastination, uh, what we any tricks of trades you know to to have any procrastination busters what is procrastination on individual level and what impact it has on the team level uh, also uh, we talked about this subject because it's very relevant right now due to the pandemic state of affairs where a lot of people are working from home and they don't have social proximity to uh, other people around them uh, we talked also about uh, an alternative approach which is actually uh, something called uh, active procrastination, whether that's a uh, good uh, tactics to follow or not, uh, uh, please watch the interview to have a grasp on it. And also between uh, the difference between a teller and an asker when somebody asks about the task, if it's uh, getting done in time or uh, not. Uh, the interview was an interesting one because uh, uh, speaking volume about the level of uh, uh, coaching that uh, Mike offers. Uh, I was actually interviewed on a few issues that, uh, and um, I actually encourage you to uh, use the comment section to actually comment around uh, what we talked and also if you have any uh, procrastination busters and uh, stories that you might tell uh, around the impact of procrastination whether it's within your team or uh, within uh, uh, the proximity of the loved ones. Uh, as usual, a link of this book, uh, The Emergent Leader, it's in the comment section and uh, please take advantage of it because it's a really great book and it has uh, a little bit for everybody who is in the leadership game and not just in the leadership game. Uh, so without further ado, let's uh, go and uh, ask my those questions. Two totally different uh, concepts there, by yeah, the way. Yeah. But let's start on the let's start on the individuals. Yeah. Often people who uh, are working around people who are known to be procrastinators think of them as being lazy. They don't complete a task. They don't get started because they're not organized. So a lot of people start becoming critical without actually analyzing themselves what could they do to support that person to help that person and particularly if you are uh, a team leader and you have somebody in your um, team that doesn't complete tasks um, and it's so frequent that you start doubting whether or not you can trust them to to do a particular thing so what help can you give you know is it laziness now the short answer is no it isn't well it can be but it's very infrequently laziness often it's to do with uh, a fear of failure it can be uh, a, um, a self-doubt a concern about whether i can do the job it can be that quite frequently you don't know how to tell somebody that you're overloaded with work and prioritize what needs to be done. So it's a real time management issue. So procrastination isn't simple, but some of the ways of helping people over procrastination is to accept that there are lots of things in the background that you as the leader have no control over. What you can do is perhaps put in place a process that helps that person uh, really take control of what they are doing. So the very first thing is to look at 
when they're given a task, what do they actually do with the process of managing what they need to do? In other words, do they have a simple to-do list? Do they actually put it into their to-do list and prioritize its importance? Do they even question the leader as to the importance to the leader of that task's completion? Now, the thing that you would have remembered from the time together with the LMA courses that they used to refer to as two things to pick up on any task that comes in or any activity. Is it a high payoff activity? Yes. Or is it a low payoff activity? Yeah. Okay, so the first thing is, is it something that's critical to your success, the team's success, the business success, whatever it might be? And if it is, how important is it? How critical is it? it and once you've evaluated that, you can then call it a high payoff activity. If it isn't in that category, then firstly, delegate it if you have the authority to delegate tasks or have that discussion with the person that's overloading you to get them to realize that they're giving you something which has low value in the scheme of things to all the other tasks that you're working on. Now that's your discussion, it's in your hands to have that now. As I used to say to you when we were doing the LMA training, if you actually have a to-do list that you're writing up each day, it's simple to be able to put that in front of the manager in a non-confrontationist -conf uh, way and say, I'm happy to take that task on, but will you help me to reprioritize what where you wanted to sit in what I'm working on now so that I don't let you down on things that you have an expectation that I complete today or this week or whenever okay so that's that's in your the balls in your court to do that okay so if it's if it's important to ask the appropriate questions and the person being questioned needs to feel that you are genuinely trying to find out how you can be supportive. What judgment do you have to stay out of? Okay, so in the book, I make quite a point of asking questions for which you don't have answers. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go back to the LMA days, I would quite often throw something out and say, tell me about it because I've no idea how you're going to respond. Uh, I, I might, you might tell me a story about how something went wrong and I will say, tell me about it. What might you have done differently? Okay, so all of those are questions. I've no idea how you're going to answer, but what I'm trying to do is give you the option to think about the fact that I'm actually coming from a point of support so the thing I really want to go back to my book, one of the things I use it as the art of delegation, but it's exactly the same question if somebody's procrastinating, assume that perhaps you haven't delegated the task properly. You haven't made it clear, but the person hasn't had the confidence or the self uh, awareness to actually ask you for some help or support. By going through the reverse SMART, S-M-A-R-T, when you're delegating. Okay. Have I delegated a task that is specific? Have I made it absolutely clear and measurable when I want it to be achieved? Have I checked that it's actually achievable? that the person has the time, the ability, the knowledge to be able to do it. Now that's where that person has the ability to put their to-do list in front of you and say, well, look, I've got 10 things that you're asking me to do this week. Where do you want to help me prioritize? That's giving them the chance yeah, when you right. say, is it achievable? The next is, is it realistic? 
And realistic comes back to, do they know how to use the software? Do they, knew, do they know how to use the tools? Is it realistic that this person at that level does the task that you're asking of them? And the very final one, the T, is what's in it for them? In a team environment, the person you're asking or delegating a task to, or who maybe is procrastinating, could be doing it because they've got very low self-awareness, self, low self-esteem. I get dumped on. I don't know where I fit in this team, but I always seem to get the tasks that other people don't want to do. All of those things are clear examples, actually, of low self-awareness, low self-esteem. So what I'm really saying is, from a leader's viewpoint, the simple thing is check by asking questions. And the smart way of asking those questions is a little, um, if you like, a little planner that you can go through in your mind. So try to remove all the obstacles for the person, but through questions, not through solving their problems. Or you second guessing what you think yeah, exactly. the reason is. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. The other the other thing, Edward, if you come from a viewpoint of when I'm asking those questions, you're out of judgment. What you're listening for is gaps in where you felt your understanding of that person's knowledge or experience or ability to do the job. So if you're getting answers back that aren't what you expected, see them as opportunities to mentor that person, coach that person, train that person. And during that process of at least understanding that there is a problem, understanding the problem is now something that you've uncovered or potentially you've uncovered, is to address whether or not there are issues that are, well, the person's been trained. Why, why isn't the person doing it? Well, the person might have been trained several years ago or several months ago it on their CV. Yeah, yeah. And it could say on their CV they're totally capable of doing it. Now, you imagine if suddenly somebody comes up and says, I want that task done because I assume that you can do it, I don't check, I dump on you, and you haven't got the courage or whatever it might be to stand up and say, whoa, hang on, I really don't know how to do that currently. Yes, I got trained, but suddenly you're getting paid as if you actually could do the job, depending on what your pay scale is or how you're being assessed for the job you've got. There are things that people in, particularly in corporate environments, are loath to open to somebody who is a teller. Yeah, somebody who's an asker, you'll open up and you'll say, yes, I did know, but I need a refresher. Yeah, because sometimes when I had the problem, I um, haven't used a system in uh, yeah. months or years, and then I even forgot the password. To enter. Correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's a good example, you know, oh, that system, oh, I haven't used it in a while, yeah, so, uh, uh, so that might stop you from, <laughs> from delivering that work, not that you can't get the password, but I'm just saying, yeah. it's a, probably it's a small example, yeah. But it's a good example because mostly people think about people who are procrastinating, um, that they're either poor time managers, or they've got a problem, or they're lazy. Um, do I put my hand up and admit that I am a procrastinator? And the short answer is yes at times, but I justify my procrastination on the basis that I like to work under pressure. Yeah. And by delaying doing the action in terms of starting it, uh, the pressure builds up because I know I have a deadline. So I judge myself always, do I meet every deadline? And the short answer is I've never been criticized for missing a board report or whatever it might be, or an important uh, piece of stuff I've promised. 
am I an absolute pain in the ass to people around me because the pressure builds up until ultimately I will work, you know, 15, 18 hour days towards the end to where I'm physically and mentally tired. Is that a good strategy in the long term? No, it's a silly strategy. No, it's not. But it's worked for me over the years and I've done it. Yeah, and yeah. if you read my book, there's a psychologist in there that says it's one of the strategies to overcome procrastination. But having done it, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, but particularly if you if you like the, the people around you, because whilst you're focused on delivering your outcome, nothing else matters. And that's not necessarily uh, a good way out of procrastination. One final thing with procrastination that I've mentioned in my book, some people who have, say, ADHD or a uh, depression or anxiety or a mental health issue of some sort may have difficulty in being able to uh, deal with a standard process. It may be that the um, medicine they're taking creates a problem for them. So if you see people who normally have been good at problem solving and process uh, organizing, struggling, ask questions, find out if there are other issues that are creating your perception of procrastination. It might be that the person has another issue that they haven't shared with you or anyone else. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, it does. Thank you.